بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وين الأربعين وين الأكتاف وين الخل وين العذب وين الغياب وين السلوك وين الصيام الله تعالى العظيم في هذا المسجد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا رسوله وأولي الأمر منكم ماذا بي أولياء الله عينون بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا في الله سمح ضوء فضل الله اللهم إن نعوذ بك أن نشرك بك شيئا ونحن نعلم ونستغفرك بما لا نعلم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين يا رب العالمين All these things we recite are disclaimers and introductions We are saying يا ربي Grant us without support We have nothing Grant us support through your beloved servants. We ask for our teachers' support, for, through them, for Prophet's support, for Allah's support. And we make niyyah. Sheikh Abdullah Faiz Daghestani taught, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim taught the Murids, at any time they go to a masjid or they're about to pray or something to say, Nawaina Arba'een, we are making niya for seclusion. Nawain al-Arba'in, Nawain al-Khalwa, to be secluded. Nawain al-Uzla, to be away from people. And to devote this time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for any other purpose. Riyadha, to pray, to... Riyadha is like the will, the awrad, is to practice. We also intend to move on the path of becoming good servants. Because that's a, a journey. That's an, not a journey, what do you say? Uh, an ad, uh, what was that, the Lord of the Rings? No, no. Lord of, the, Lord of the Rings, the movie. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I'm young, I watch movies. So. You haven't watched that? The, 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 what do you call when they had the when they had the group together, the fellowship, and then they moved on? Huh? No, it was a quest. It was a quest. Okay, a quest. Similarly, it is a quest. It is a um, perilous journey, not peri perilous? Perilous. journey to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure because what is sought is treasures. You are asking for eternal happiness. What did you do to deserve it? And why are we entitled? What, what I, I was created, therefore I'm entitled? No, you. You have to, you have to sacrifice. The Prophet Sallallahu indicated this with jihad al-akbar. He says, now we come back to from the small jihad to the grand jihad. Allah His companions were coming back from battle when he said this. That's that's the small jihad. What is this jihad? That what is this grand jihad? So he was indicating that the real enemy standing is the one standing between us and Allah. It may have an outer form, but it definitely has an inner form. Because nafs, nafs al amaratun bisu illa ma Nafs, nafs is inclined towards badness. It is attracted to do things short term, short pleasure, seeking gratification right away. It doesn't want, doesn't care about eternity. It doesn't care about uh, being good or any of that, no. It just wants what it wants now. 
Forgive me. No. That's all it wants. So that is our bigger enemy teamed up with shaitan, teamed up with our attachment to the ornaments of dunya and the pleasures and the, the material, physical things. Morning to evening, Sayyid Billah, Alhaakum takathur hatta zurtumul maqabir, Allah says. He said, you are distracted with competing and fighting and struggling for what? For collection. Right. You have in your family, you have the smallest income, everybody's looking down at you. It doesn't make too much money. You have a smaller house than the rest. And if you're renting, oh, that's okay. what is this? You drive an old car, like the one I have downstairs. MashaAllah. <laughs> Why he drives this car? Like that. So, the nafs looks, you know, around and says, you don't have, your brother has, your uncle has, your sister, brother. what's wrong with you? What are you, a loser? Go get some more. And then also, family, they also have egos. Wife has egos, the children have egos, everybody wants better also. So, everybody's beckoning you, get more. This is not enough. And then, well, you know, accumulating and, and getting requires time and energy. And this is your capital for life. This is what you, this is your main capital in this world. This is what you've been given to attain Allah's pleasure. And you spend it on attaining your nafs pleasure and your ego's pleasure. What do you expect at that, after that? You spent your capital to have a big house. You spent it to have a big car. You, have, you spent it to go on vacations. You spent it to do this and do that. What do you, what do you want now? That's, we read earlier the Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad hadith, hadith al-Nabi Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Tirmidhi La tazuru qadamu abdin yawm al-qiyama hatta yus'al an umrihi fi ma'afna wa an ilmihi ma fa'ala fi wa an malihi min ayna ktasaba وفيما أنفق وعن جسمه فيما أبلى أخي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن حديث إن ترمذي إن جامعة جامعه بإسناد صحيح عن أبي برز الأسلمي that your will not be permitted on the day of standing, a day that's as long as a thousand years, waiting to be judged. He said that your a feet of a servant will not be allowed to move. You are stuck. Until you answer four questions. What have you spent your life doing? What did you do with the time we gave you? And what did you do with the knowledge that we granted you? Or acquired? How did you use that? And what about your wealth? Where did you attain that? How did you attain that? وَعَنْ جِسْمِهِ فِيمَا أَبْلَى And about his body, how he spent it. How did you spend your health? 
How did you use your, this physical body that Allah gave you? He said, no one will move until he gives satisfying answers. Four answers. Okay. How did you spend the time you gave, you were given, the health you were given, the money, the wealth you were given, the, uh, where did you get it? How did you attain it? Well, then the told told the story in one of the books, Sheikh Nazim, that there was once a king who was afraid of death. And he was terrified of death. So he was on his deathbed and he made a wasiyah to his son. Don't let me spend the first night alone. Pay whatever you need to pay, but make sure somebody goes down at least the first night. After that, the first night, <laughs> I don't want to be in the grave alone. So the king made an announcement. The, his son, the king died. We're going to bury him, and we're giving this much gold to anyone who would go with him in the grave the first night. Who wants to go in the grave? Yeah, I mean, even if you're giving a sack of gold, spend the night in the grave with the corpse, it's a big thing. It's not, uh, you need. Uh. There was one poor Hattab, very poor. He had nothing. He would go to the forest, he cut the tree, bring and sells the wood. And that's how he made old man. He, they told him, he said, I'm, I'm, old, I'm old. What's going to happen? If I die, yeah, he has one rope, he said, and he has uh, carries with him, and he has an axe. He says, I'll take the axe in case something comes. I can kill them with the axe. And in his rope, he ties his around his uh, uh, cloak. They go in the grave, and everybody leaves. I mean, no light, no sound, no nothing. And then this old man is like, this is scary, with the corpse. And then all of a sudden he perceives something coming. And then he starts to hear this old man. Not only he is feeling something, he's hearing some, someone is coming. You know, Ankar Wanakir, as soon as people leave, they come. So Ankar Wanakir, there's a corpse, there's a process, there's, it has to be processed. People left, they arrived. This man now, they came, they say, oh, and this is Mawlana's story. They say, oh, there are two, there was supposed to be one. <laughs> Who is, what's going on here? They say, it's true. This one is still alive. Ah, okay, let's start with him then. This one is not going anywhere. He's dead. Where is he going to go? But this one is still alive. But he's here. Let's, let's see what he's about. He said all night they were asking him about only the rope and the axe. Where did you get the rope? How did you use the rope? What, the <laughs> what about the axe? you harm anybody with this axe? All, all night long, he said, rope was rope and axe. Where did you attain them? Daylight came, they lifted the stone. And the new king has a sack of gold waiting for the old man to come out. He jumps out and runs. Where are you going? This is gold. He said, all night. They're questioning me about the, the rope <laughs> and the axe. You want me to also take the gold? No. <laughs> leave, leave it. <laughs> these, these stories are, are to teach us. But we, we are, we are, astaghfirullah, zaloom jahul. We are ignorant and we are oppressors. And we, we don't learn. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we waste our time. The uh, hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma salli ala sallam in husni islam in mar tarkuhu ma la yani How many times I was around Mawlana Shaykh and somebody would ask a question and he would say ma la yani the murids sometimes new people come he would entertain their questions even if maybe the questions are so he would back and forth but if you're a, a student and you ask I said what is it that of, you, of your concern I ask the sheikh trivia questions what do you think about this what do you think about that what's that your concern and he said that you ask what is of your concern when you go to the mashaykh if you go to visit your sheikh you don't you ask only what is what is necessary for you or if somebody asks you to ask you ask on their behalf you don't ask things that are of no concern to you and this is based on the hadith of prophet sallallahu a hadith that is should be written with with gold you want to be a good muslim in husni islam in mar you want to have a beautiful Islam, you want to be a great Muslim, leave that which does not concern you. Simple. Does it concern me when somebody asks you to give your opinion? Does it concern me? When somebody asks you to take part of something, does it concern me? Right? If it concerns you, if somebody asks you to help them, it concerns you because Allah is helping you as long as you're helping your brother. So that's of concern to you. You, you help. Uh, let's go and uh, watch uh, football. Or let's go, does that concern you? What, do, what does 11 uh, players from uh, Argentine playing against 11 p players from Brazil concern you men wearing shorts running after a ball how is that of concern to you huh? is Trump gonna go to jail it's not concern you does it concern you is he going to be president hmm? is it not co no concern because what we're not getting is that you have a limited amount of time. And, and in business, they teach you every time you say yes to something, you are saying no to many things. Okay? Every time you say yes to uh, something that wastes your time, you are, taking, you are not able to do now things that concern you with that time. Uh, the Sheikh gives you awrad. Why he gives you wirk? It concerns you. To make dhikrullah is of great concern to you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dhikrullah dhikran kathira. It's order, make, make dhikr. Allah wants you to make dhikr. Your Lord, your creator wants you to make dhikr. So the shaykh says, make dhikr. Make 1500 Allah every time, every day. By, by tongue, by heart. 300 salawat on the Prophet Pray. These are all of concern to you. Go to work. Of concern to you. You need to feed your family. You need to look after. You are responsible. So everything you measure, it, is it of concern to beneficial for me in dunya and for, for people around me or beneficial for me in akhirah? That is of concern. Outside that is what we do nowadays. 90% of our time is of no concern to us. We are scrolling the net, we are playing video games, we are uh, watching movies, we are, uh, I don't know what we're doing. You see? 
And we have, we have Prophet Sallallahu he said, my ummah is, the ages of my uh, ummah is between 60 and 70 years. The majority is between 60 and 70 years. The few, few Muslims, they cross over that. But the majority are living, and if you average it in their 60s, uh, 70, 70 years is nothing. Allah forgive us, I'm not sitting here uh, telling you this because I'm very sharp. Yani. No, I'm trying. But the point is, we are, is to try. Jihad. The point is, is to struggle. Don't give in to your inclinations and your nafs. So you come to the shaykh, you have the awrad, you have the athkar, you advise you to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to pray on time, to pray your sunan over your, uh, not just your fara'id, to fast if you can, to tawwa, to make dhikr, to... He gives you all these things so that you are using your time in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that Allah may open for you ability and way to defeat your enemies. Because unless and until we overcome the hurdle of the nafs, we're not gonna reach. That's the, that's, but then these are all tools. And you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the sincerity in your effort. Even one day you're fighting, one day you're, you're beaten by your nafs, one day you make a mistake, you repent, you're, you're struggling, you're making jihad on the way. Hmm? And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees it fit, He may instantly give you that power to reach. May instantly open to your heart the, uh, call it rihu siba to reach, to have power to overcome your, your enemies. This is what we're asking. We're asking to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. It's not a small feat. Allah's pleasure. Oh, how you quantify that? How can you imagine what that means? Allah creator of seen and unseen, known and unknown. What is, if he is pleased with us, Ajib, what does that mean? It's something magnificent. This is something, if we really have faith, we should apply ourselves a million percent trying to achieve that. It's a struggle. It's a struggle until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens for us. But if you die while you're making jihad, you are shaheed, inshallah. See? If you're dying in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, struggling to please Him, if you die trying, hmm? you're shaheed. In outside world, what about the inside? It's the grander jihad. That's the smaller jihad. So if the smaller jihad has shaheed, the grand jihad doesn't have shaheed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to try, wants us to believe, wants us to do wants us to sacrifice Holy Quran. The way of Prophet is the biggest example. His life is our biggest example. Everything he gave. Everything he gave. Not just him, his family, his companions. Uh, it, it ended the jihad after Prophet Wasallam. How many in, in the uh, wars of Ridda? 10,000 Sahabis? Died? Why? Why would Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari in his 90s 
go to fight the Romans in Turkey. Now he's maqam. Huh? Move. Do. Muslims, we are not supposed to daydream our life. Supposed to have azima, intent. This is a reminder for me. I'm, I'm telling you this. Don't, don't look at me. I'm not a sheikh. I'm not even a good student. But I am sitting here with my, with my sheikh's permission. I'm still thinking why he put me in this place. But we have to try. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ability, grant us to reach his pleasure, Ya Rabb. And give us sincerity, and give us azima, give us, give us to, be, to have high aspiration. Not to, not to our aspiration to be just to get a house, to get this, to get that. All this is finishing. All this, build what you like, what the angels in the morning, every month, make, make, uh, make a nida. Do, build what you like, it, is, it will be destroyed. Oh, son of Adam, get up, build. It will be, it will be nothing. And love whom you like, you will have to separate from them. You will have to leave them. At the end, it's us. It's not us. At the end, la ilaha illallah. All of us will stand one day in his presence. And we'll have to account for the gifts we were given. What did we do with it? Ya Rabbi Tawbah, astaghfirullah. Tubna wa raja'na ilayk. اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وتقصيرنا يا الله ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الفاتحة صلي على محمد